everyone. What's up, guys? Doing a ultra premium, very rare bourbon. This is the very old St. Nick, 17 year old. Lost Barrel. The Lost Barrel. If you read in the back, it says the Lost Barrel is the very last of some of the rarest Kentucky bourbon whiskey in existence. So, I've spoken to enough people that are connected enough for me to come comfortably be able to say that this is for sure, 100% for sure, um, Stitzel Weller juice. Uh, I mean, what would they do? This is from 1981, 1980. Do you know what year it's, it's from? Yeah, it's both. These are both from 81 and 82. And they did it for 17 years. They stopped at 1999 and they stored all of these barrels in a steel vat. So basically it's been in the steel vat since 1999. You probably know when they released the first one. Was it last year? A couple years ago? I'm not sure. Got it, but something like that. But anyway, they've been, you know, it's 17 years old. They're all cut off at 17 years old, but they're releasing them whenever they want. These little lost barrels that are 17 year old cask strength Stitzel Weller. Is it years. cask strength? It says 108.4. So yeah. Cask strength? Yeah. 108.4. And this is a half bottle. Uh, a half bottle and it retails at 600. So it's retailing at 1200 bucks essentially for a full bottle. Um, and that's because they got to pay tax on it, right? When they're storing it. Yep. When they're storing it, they're paying tax on it each year. It's been sitting around for a long time. 17 years old, cask strength, Stitzel Weller. I don't know how well you guys could see that, but that is straight dark, coffee dark color. Very, 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 very dark. And it's at 54.2%. This. And for what it's worth, this says um, lot four, barrel lot four, and bottle 440. I don't know, I'm not sure how many bottles, but. So, it's been breathing for a good uh, 20 to 25 minutes. And right away on the nose, you're just getting, the oak is so unique. It's not like your typical bourbon, I'll tell you that much. No, no, no. It is not like your typical bourbon. It takes you to places this has, that cola element is, it's like a flat cola. Mm -hmm. It's like a flat cola when a Coke has been sitting out for hours and it turns flat. It's got that kind of a sweetness to it, but the earthy element, the mushrooms. Ooh. Yeah, mushrooms and black truffles. It is, it's like, it's it's obviously not like Paxarette level, but it's taking you back to like the old moldy, musty, dusty, danky, like sherry casks, where it's got like, obviously that deep cola, some balsamico, very acidic like vinaigrette. He said it, the, the wild forest mushrooms, the black truffles, super unique. What I love about it, it's a bourbon. It says bourbon on it, but give this to me blind, and I'm not saying I won't know. I won't, I'll be shocked that it's a bourbon, but it's almost like approaching those like epic old school sherry casks. So sad. This is like, yeah, unique, unique oak. Very, very unique. It's got the burnt caramel. But it's not like your typical bourbon. Your, your or, vanilla, your caramel, not your like brown that at all. all. It, it's got it's complexity so unique, to it that I'm not used to getting from your average bourbon, right? Yeah. But it does. It does have. Obviously, it's got like some some beautiful, exquisite, rich brown sugar. Yes. But it's the other stuff, you know, from the corn, whatever. But it's the other stuff, man. It's the oak play. The oak is so different in this. And there's an herbal element to this. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I can't pick my uh, put my word on it, but it's got this like herbal element to it that's very unique. And the wood play, it's got that that sandal woodiness, mm. and it's just very unique. It's got a touch of that leather. I get a lot, a lot of like um, anise root, like kind of like you said herbal, but like an herbal quality anise root and licorice, like deep black yeah. licorice. It's got a little potpourri to it. Yeah. Black licorice, like you said. A little root beer. Yeah, root beer like uh, sarsaparilla, sassafras root, and um, 
it's almost like uh, a little bit of uh, like balsamic vinegar we said, but and perfume, but it's almost like like an herbal liqueur, like a really sweet herbal liqueur. Yeah, I get the vinaigrette, but it's almost like a strawberry vinaigrette. It's like yeah. A, yeah. This is bomb. This is different, this man. This is unique. So, so much musky wood uniqueness, such just like, like I could put a, my finger in here and go like this and yeah. smell good going out. Like And like what's crazy, right? You think of, you hear about weeded bourbons, right? Like say modern Pappy or even some of the older Pappies where it was Stitzel Weller. And you think maybe like there's more fruits like strawberry, raspberry, stuff like that. But because of the oak play, if this is older Stitzel Weller, then this is a whole different world, man, from any I've ever had modern and the stuff. Thing, and the thing about Stitzel Weller is you were getting 43%, you were getting 50%. Um, here you're bumping it up to 54.2%, so you're getting more of that. You're saying it's cast strength. I yeah. didn't know that it was. Because even even those uh, the older, those old Fitzgerald bottlings, 40s, 50s, 60s vintages, the little, the little short dumpy bottles, even those were maximum... 100 proof and you're never bottles. really getting those at 17 years old those were 8 10 and 12 years old mainly yeah there i've seen there were some releases very limited 15 18 years old but they're almost impossible to find yeah the standard was the very old 8 the uh, very extra old 10 and then the 12 yeah so this is 17 year old at 54.2 percent so it's like how much better can it get in those old fitzgeralds it's crazy Palette. Palette. Can't wait to dig into this. Oh my god. Mm. 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 How is this not sherry? But on the palate, it's it's a lot more bourbony than it was in the nose. This is crazy, man. But it's Wow. Mm. I eat a lot of black licorice. I Im actually import my black licorice from Europe. Mm -hmm. Growing up in Europe, I'm a huge fan of the candies and stuff from over there. Oh my God. Dude. And this, for you Swedish people, this is like so the real so deal of so so This is, this is black licorice paradise combined with those like mushrooms and umami and black truffles and, and the leathery, the oakiness, the drying elements is very leathery and sandalwoody and musky. And you do feel the bourboniness with the, with the caramel and vanilla and, and, uh, and that, that corn, corn, I don't want to say corn sweetness. It's corn without that really a uh, lot of sweetness. It's not a very sweet, it's got the flavors but without that like sweetness that sometimes can be too much in a bourbon. Mm. See, I don't, I don't get any of that, man. What are you getting? The oak, man. The oak's the oak. The oak is the main part, but it kind of lingers in the background. You're not getting a lot of the black licorice? No, 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 it's no, 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 of course, but I mean, but any any kind of like corn or You're not or feeling like, like you know, when I say that, bourbon, anything, no, no, it's not typical. Any of it. No, 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 it's not typical. But on the nose, I'd be like, oh, this is this a bourbon? What is this? But on the pilot right away, at least I know it's a bourbon. Got it. Yeah. If I, it's more like, okay, I know it's a bourbon, right? So I can't get that out of my head. So in that way, I know for sure it's not a sherry scotch. No, but, no, that's not. Yeah, but no, it's, it's not. like. No, it's a bourbon for sure. But it's, get, different get those, from, it's different from pretty much yeah, any other bourbon. But yeah. I mean, you get, you get that crazy sherry oak stuff. And I've never really seen a bourbon that's like coffee. I've seen scotches that are like oh, yeah. that, right? But like you mentioned, you mentioned the umami. Yeah, I get like, I get like crazy savory. Speaking of coffee. Yeah, like cr coffee, of course, espresso. Yeah. But like crazy savory beef broths. And, beef broths. And even, beef broths. even like beef go broths. going into meat, like elk tenderloin. Yes. Filet. Like gamey. Game. It, it's not filet. It's like elky. It's, elk. Elk it's like elky and. It's like you said, uh, like, that, like the, the dirty, earthy, like mushroom yes, elements. Yes. Yeah. And in, in that sense, yeah, we're getting, we're getting, like, it's oh, such spicy. a unique bourbon. You don't really get bourbons like this. Like it's, oh my God. it's very unique. Yeah, like like Alkenbison. The, the point is, 
obviously there's no peat in there, there's no barley in there, but the oak just takes over where all the typical things we associate with bourbon today, I can't find any of them, it's gone. It's not like your bourbon today at all. It's not like it at all, it's very special. It's so different and it's did so well there. So it, it's my point was it is a weeded bourbon, but it's like, it's so hard to compare that to the weeded bourbons today. It truly is a lost barrel. <laughs> you can never find again today. It's crazy. But you're almost getting it. Obviously, it's not it's not peat, but more bourbon even with water truck. Just right, the, go for it. It's the it's like those those crazy herbal earthy elements like like the the wild forest floor, being out in the woods, the black truffles. I've never had a spirit with this much black licorice. That's what takes over for me. Yeah, and of course black. This licorice. much black licorice. Yeah, it is really unique with that black licorice and lavender element to it. Try it now. It's different. Very, very, very different. It it hides. It like dissipates the oak. Does it get too bit. oaky for you? No, no, I'm saying it like, it like, it like hides the oak, hiding the bourbon for me. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. You said. But I'm exactly asking you, bourbon. I'm asking you on the palate, does it get too oaky? Go on, let me try. Because I am now approaching to the point where it's almost too oaky. Got it. Again, not too oaky as in like I don't enjoy it too oaky. Too oaky to the point where like this is one of the best bourbons I've ever had. And if it was a little bit more tamed down, it would just be on that extra next level because it is dry but with water really dry. yeah i added dry water so i, I was worried about water though because yeah. it's so amazing by so let me try that but yeah it's just gorgeous man but yeah like, like you you kept, you kept saying it i think honestly like he called it the star is probably the anise root and the licorice like the more that you taste it and the finish it's unique the licorice man i'm trying it with water drying Really, really, really dry. Really a lot of oak. And I don't mind it because mm -hmm. I like an oaky bourbon. But the people that complain about like Pappy 23 being too oaky. Ooh, this too is, much for them. This is not for you. What's this is about? not for you. This is a concentration. It's like a half bottle because you're getting like a bottle of vinegar. Like it's concentrated. It is a constant concentrated bourbon. I'm going to say, it looks like a bottle of like fancy balsamica, dude. Yeah, $600 yeah. a half bottle of balsamica. Right. No, you're right about that. It's taking me, it's taking me almost to like... Old, like 50 year old, like first fill scotch, like sherry level oak, you know, yeah, like drying oak, oak, which I there, love, I yeah. love that, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, like a lot of people that are into bourbon, he nailed it. Pappy 23, Pappy 20 is too oaky for you. This is not your bourbon. I fucking love it though. Mm. I, I, love, I love both ways. Hard to say, actually, probably, probably a little better without water, but this is I'm gonna go without water. The oaky's nuts too, man. Don't have water. The oaky's nuts too, though. I can't get over the licorice. The black licorice and earth. It's not a sweet bourbon. It's no. not sweet at all. That's why we like it. That's why we like it. I'd say the people that say I love scotch, I don't like bourbon. You give them this. Boom. Perfect. This is a scotch drinker's bourbon. Perfect. Um, this is incredible. The finish is long with bitter dark chocolate and coffee mm -hmm. and those mushrooms and and oakiness and the sandalwood and cedar wood and umami dude yeah. umami the deep beef broth is the beef broth and the elk and spices. the beef yeah. broth and elk i get a lot of like prosciutto and like ham with scotches this is like elk and yes yeah. gamey gamey Gamy. from the 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 earthiness funk. from the oak yeah from funk. the oak funk boom um we've been Same. drinking a lot of bourbon lately Same. and we were talking we've been talking about this i think we've been overscoring our bourbons a little bit just because if we're gonna compare it to sky it's almost like a bourbon score right it's not so much like if I'm going to compare my 92 rated scotch versus my 92 rated bourbon, I for sure think the 92 rated scotch is better. And we've been talking about this. We've kind of been overscoring our bourbons lately. We've done a lot of bourbon reviews lately. It, we, we probably, if, if we're going to compare it as a whiskey score, then it'd been overscored. Yes. So, so if I'm going to do a whiskey score on this, it's incredible. It's a 92. 
If I was gonna do like a straight bourbon score, it would probably be a 93, but it's amazing. We finished, we just finished having some incredible scotches. So, so perspective, 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 yeah. But this is easily, easily one of the very, very, very best bourbons I've ever had. It's a, it, I'm gonna give it a 92. This is like, you were say, you say about scotches all the time. When we have a Samaroli, it drops every other scotch by now a certain amount of points. This is dropping thing with the bourbons, man. It's dropping it by like two, three points. So yeah, we were talking about it. We gave the old yeah. card a batch, batch three and ninety two. We kind of talked about it. It's probably more like a ninety. Right. We kind of, kind of were in the moment. Kind of, you know, we probably overscored it a little bit because uh, we love it so much. That's why. But but yeah, the, this is just something different. This is and another see, level of it's, complexity. It, it's whatever your latest thing is. It goes day to day, moment to moment. Like. Yeah. It's a 92 until you have something like this. So it's all yeah. relative. Yeah. So s similar note, I'm really, I'm struggling between, for any whiskey, between 92, 93, I'll err on the side of caution 92, but it, it, it is that good. And compared to it, all other bourbons, like especially modern bourbons, drop down by points. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I have to say, you really have to like an oaky bourbon. If you don't, it's not for you. Yes. Good if point. you don't, it's going to be in the 80s for you. Great point. Great you point. have to really like a dry. If you like sweetness, if you like that maple syrupiness, that corn sweetness. Candy. Yeah. Vanilla caramel, uh, uh, maple syrup, and, and, and sweet corn candy. Not for you. If that's what you like, this might not be for you. But if you like earthy elements combined with complexities and not sweetness and the, the meaty stuff that we talked about, like yeah. the elk... In, in, in all that, if you like, if that sounds interesting, and if you're like a serious scotch drinker, I really think you're going to appreciate this. This is very unique. Um, $600 for a half bottle. I can, it's overpriced, but I can, for the rarity of it, the fact that it's Stetzel, I think it's fair. I do too. I think it's fair. I think it's fair for Especially what it is. Especially when you the rarity of it, the collectability of it, and compare the craze today. Yeah, and what Buffalo Trace and all that shit's going for. You price. get a fucking bottle of Weller foolproof for the same price. Is that yeah? What you know, secondary. In that way, it's fairly priced. You bullshit. Yeah, hundred percent. Really cool. Really unique experience. If you're into bourbon, this is a must try. Like you, you gotta have, you gotta try this. You gotta try this. Super unique. Super different. Um, yeah, special. And if you're in a scotch and think bourbon's too sweet, this might be the perfect bourbon for you. Really unique. I'd say nose beats palate because it's so oaky and drying. I yes. didn't want to tone it down by 20%, yes, yes. but I enjoy the oak and drying, so I'm okay with it. But I would still want it to be a little bit more luscious, a little less oaky. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That, that would have bumped it up to a 93 right. for me. In general, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. All right. We'll yes. see you guys soon. Let us know if you tried this. Thumbs up's most appreciated. Subscribe if you want to see more reviews like this coming up. Cheers. Cheers.